aim it for the head. First, they came for your bum stock. Now, feds just made millions of gun brace owners into criminals. Now, before we even start by reading this uh, article, I'm just going to say it like this. And I know that there'll be a hundred people who are going to disagree with me. But whether you disagree with me or not, it really doesn't matter. Because this is exactly what I believe. And I'm going to be as authentic as possible. Uh, you, first of all, you know that I'm a gun owner, you know that I'm an AR owner, and the bottom line is, I never believed that these things were pistols. I mean, first of all, these things use the exact same cartridges, they use the exact same magazines, they have the exact same uppers, they have the exact same lowers, they have... The only major difference is the length of the barrel and the length of the stock or the adjustability of the stock. As far as I'm concerned, AR pistols and AK pistols are rifles, period. I'm sorry. That's If you're using a 5.56 NATO round or you're using a 7.62 millimeter round, as far as I'm concerned, they're rifles. Um, I'm looking here at a Chris Vector, and I'm thinking that's a 45 ACP, but I could be wrong. It could be a 40 S and W, or it could be something else, because I really can't see exactly what it is. But the Chris Vector, in my opinion, shouldn't be considered a rifle. That's actually, to me, that's really like a submachine gun, uh, except it's, uh, it, you know, it depends if it's semi-automatic or if it's fully automatic. But I guess, uh, depending upon what the state is, I guess it probably doesn't even matter. If it's a civilian version of it, usually what they do is like the P90. They put like a longer barrel on it and they uh, f they make it so you can't conceal carry it so easily. But um, the bottom line is, as far as I'm concerned, these things are rifles. If, if you're firing a pistol cartridge... Then you like a submachine gun or maybe even a pistol, depending upon um, how the gun's designed. But uh, the AK and the AR, as far as I'm concerned, both of those are fucking rifles, okay? So if you got a problem with that, okay, you can have your problem with that. Now, as far as the bump stocks, um, when I first saw a bump stock years, years, years ago, this was before the uh, Paddock shooting over there, and I think it was uh, Vegas where he was shooting at that crowd. As soon as I saw the bump stock and I understood the logic behind it where basically you're able to externally alter a gun, but you can't internally alter a gun. And I saw that bump stocks, which is something that could be done without a stock and it could just be done by holding the rifle in a specific way and then just pulling the trigger and using forward momentum and blah, blah, blah. Well... When I first saw bump stocks, I was like, yeah, there's no fucking way the uh, government's going to allow you to have this shit for very long. I knew they were coming for those sooner or later. So sure enough, you get this whole cloudy incident with this paddock guy. This whole cloudy incident, we never got answers to that. And all of a sudden, they came for the bump stocks, which, by the way, that was... Donald Trump, who was sitting there with his arms crossed, uh, yeah, I say we take the guns first and then do process. Take the guns first and then give them due process. Now, keep that in mind because I can't make that shit up. That was Donald Trump who, who okayed that shit. But the bottom line is uh, bump stocks, while I absolutely don't believe that those went against the word of the laws, technically they went against the spirit of the law. But the reality was, when I saw what those things could do, I was like, nah, there's no way you're going to ever be allowed to fucking have this shit. For, they're going to come for these sooner or later. But now, and, and this is another thing. There's a video on YouTube where the cops pull over a dude, and he's got an AK with a pistol brace. And the pistol brace... It's an AK pistol, they call it, with a pistol brace. And the guy had the brace wrapped around his arm. 
That guy couldn't even lift up his head. Now, this was these are white cops that pulled the dude over. It was a black guy. He had this AK with this pistol brace. And that pistol brace was wrapped around his arm to the point where he couldn't simply drop the gun. And he had it in the car, and he was smart enough not to pick it up and point it at them. But this guy had that thing attached to his arm like he was Mega Man. Like he had a fucking arm cannon. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, that could have been a really ugly situation where you got cops pull you over telling you to drop a gun, but the gun is attached to your body. You know, I was like, yeah, that's not a good thing. But um, this pistol brace shit, in my opinion, like, first of all, I, I see they, they obviously tried to call it AR pistol and AK pistol in order to... Um, Basically, in, in order to sell it in certain places where they normally couldn't sell the rifles. Those guns can be retooled to use smaller cartridges. I know that. They can have 9mm cartridges. They can also have um, 45 caliber cartridges. Yeah, listen, don't please don't try to fucking come after me with the bullshit about, oh, this is this and that is that. It's like, listen... I understand what these things are, and the simple fact is, whether you call it a rifle or you call it a pistol, I understand that for the most part, these things are designed to do what a rifle does. So, bottom line is, there's no point in even arguing about it, because the government just said it. So, let's read the story to understand the legality of it. It says, U.S. Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland signed ATF Final Rule. 2021R-08F on January 13th, reclassifying millions of commonly owned pistols that have stabilizing braces. The ATF has branded these guns as illegal, as illegal short-barreled rifles and shotguns, which puts them under the National Firearms Act of 1934. The rules are somewhat ambiguous, critics say. The Biden administration now requires gun owners to register these types of firearms with the federal government. The Congressional Research Service says that up to 40 million of them are currently in, or up to 40 million of them are currently in civilian ownership, and some say it's unlikely all of them will be registered. Uh, I would say it's not going to happen. Uh, the rule changes the definition of rifle. Now now keep in mind. Before you try to argue with me, understand something. If they if they literally change the definition of a rifle, then there's no argument. It says the rule changes the definition of rifle to include that which is designed, redesigned, made, or remade, and intended to be fired from the shoulder. And that's the reason why I never bought into this shit about the AR and the uh, AK pistols being not rifles i just never bought into it the way these guns are designed even when you have a pistol grip you have to lean into them with your shoulder you have to that's the reason why these pistol braces just like the ones you saw in the picture above these pistol braces are designed to be leaned into with the shoulder so from what i had remembered um years ago because again they're changing the definitions Rifles have rifled barrels. They have barrels that have twists and turns in them. They don't have smooth bores, for one. And then on top of that, when I've looked up the definition of rifle, they said that it's a shoulder-fired firearm. And the shoulder is used to help stabilize it. And it has a rifled barrel to fire a bullet that itself is stabilized by the rifling. Please don't send me the fucking hate mail because I'm not anti-Second Amendment. I have an AR-15. I got a Desert Eagle fucking 50 caliber. I want to buy a Barrett 50 caliber, but I'm pretty sure the ATF is going to stop me before I can. But the bottom line is, it's like, don't please don't fucking contact me with the bullshit because the thing about it is they, they've already done this. It's like, please don't. I, I just don't feel like... I don't feel like having to go through that nonsense. I'm just telling you what I believe based upon, you know, what I believe, what I used versus what the law says. Please don't fucking send me comments and shit, please. So anyway, any weapons with stabilizing braces or similar attachments that constitute rifles under the NFA must be registered no later than 120 days after 
date of publication in the Federal Registrar, or the short barrel removed at a 16-inch or longer rifle barrel attached to the firearm, or permanently remove and dispose of or alter the stabilizing brace such that it cannot be reattached, or the firearm is turned into your local ATF office, or the firearm is destroyed. So what ultimately this says is if you try to bring one of these guns to a local firing range, like a shooting range or a gun range or whatever you want to call it, uh, they're tra- they're basically telling you, it's like, listen, unless you do these things, those things are illegal. The ATF has published a list of 40 different brands and models that are now illegal, which you can see at this link. God damn. The ATF said owners of these guns have these options. Submit through the e-form systems an application to make and register a firearm within 120 days from the date of publication in the Federal Register. Permanently remove or alter the stabilizing brace so that it cannot be retached and thereby removing it from regulation as a firearm under the NFA. Wait, currently remove or alter the stabilizing brace so it cannot be retached. Okay, remove the short barrel and attach a 16-inch or longer rifled barrel to the firearm, thus removing it from the provisions of the NFA. Turn the firearm into your local ATF office or destroy the firearm. Gun Owners of America Senior Vice President Eric Pratt said this administration continues to find new ways to attack gun owners. Now, listen, um, I'm not going to fucking read all this shit. Um... Well, let me just read this part. It says, in 2018, the Trump administration banned bump stocks, devices that allow rapidly fire multiple rounds from semi-automatics. Wait, devices that allow rapidly fire multiple rounds. These people do not understand fucking subject word agreement. In two, it should read, in 2018, the Trump administration banned bump stocks, and I believe that should be a semicolon, device, no, in fact, what should that be? I think that should be a colon. Devices that allow rapid fire of multiple rounds from semi-automatics. This month, a federal appeals court reversed the bump stock ban, which had classified bump stocks as machine guns. And that was what I mentioned before. If you modify the internal of the gun to fire multiple times by one pull of the trigger, that supposedly makes it a machine gun. But the bump stock doesn't make it a machine gun because it's an external modification that allows gravity or inertia or friction or whatever to allow the finger to continue to fire rounds based upon the finger pulling the trigger the first time. But anyway, whatever. It's all a bunch of fucking legal mumble jumbo. And the thing about it is it's a fucking gun. That's one thing I learned. What was that movie? HBO conspiracy it was a movie conspiracy it was about the van c conference there was a certain point where one of the guys says gun means what it says you don't need all these extra fucking words gun means what it says a gun is a gun is a gun so anyway uh a plain reading of the statutory language paired with close consideration of the mechanics of a semi-automatic firearm reveals that a bump stock is excluded from the technical definition of machine gun set forth in the Gun Control Act and the National Firearms Act. So that's it. Now, personally, um personally, it's like I I'm pretty sure a whole lot of people are not gonna comply. That's number one. Um, hopefully they do comply so that they can stay within the law, but chances are that's not going to happen. Um, they're classifying these things as rifles. They're classifying these things as short barreled rifles. And that's just that. Now, the thing about what's so funny about these, um, AR-15 specifically, so many of these things have been sold. And I've made this argument before my channel. So many of these AR-15s have been sold that the liberals in these governments, the state governments and the federal governments, they ain't never getting these things back, ever. 
So many of these things have been... I remember when I went up to Maine, I went up to Portland, Maine. They were selling these fucking guns for like $500. $500. And, and I was like, damn, I wish I could get one, but I can't take it back to New York. So I guess it was just... And it, what was I? I was at Maine at a... I think it was a Models, if I'm not mistaken. It was a nice... I saw a nice AR. It was a colored frame. And I, re and I thought it was so cool. And I was like, man, I wish I could buy that. But I couldn't buy it. I couldn't, first of all, I couldn't buy, I, I couldn't buy it. And I couldn't bring it back here if I did. Now, I will tell you like this. When I bought my first AR-15, just a little story. Here in Long Island, this was, well, I made a video about it. So, you know, it's, the video is up there. But when I bought my AR-15, they did a background check. They you look at your uh what is it, your driver's license, they did that background check and everything, I had to fill out some forms and this, that, and other, I'm pretty sure they wrote down the serial number, and um, I think the entire purchase took me about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, um, if I wanted to buy a shotgun, the same thing would apply, I'd go in there, buy it, and that's it, um, Getting a pistol, however, now as, as dangerous as these people have made the AR-15 out to be, if you're here in New York, getting a pistol literally, literally to get a pistol legally it takes you a year to get a pistol. So the first thing you got to do is you got to go to the Nassau County PD or you got to go to your police station, right? You got to go to your police station. You have to get the forms. They give you a lot of forms. Uh, you have to get a uh, passport size photo. You have to pay them like $300 in total, give or take a couple of bucks. It's like $300. Then on top of that, you've got to go and find people to, to give you uh, personal recommendations. And my, that was the thing of all of the things that I ever had to do. That was the one thing that bothered me. My thing is like, listen, if I want to buy a gun, why the fuck do I need to ask for personal recommendations to buy a gun? Like, why? Like, as an American citizen, I shouldn't have to ask you shit. Uh, you know, I had an option of who to ask, but the thing about it is there were so many qualifiers. It was like, for one thing, you couldn't go to a couple and get recommendations from both of them. You had to only get one from one of them. That was one of the qualifiers. Another qualifier was it couldn't be a family member. Another qualifier was it had to be somebody who lived in the same county. And I was like, this is bullshit. I mean, what? I thought I had rights. It was like I thought I had a Second Amendment right, you know? But, again, that then comes down to state rights. And New York State, as you know, is very anti-gun. Uh, you know, now we got Hochul in there. Not only is she anti-gun, but she's anti-gas stove. She's anti-gas connections for buildings. And she's pro-speeding tickets through red light cameras. So, in any event, it's like, it took me less than an hour to get my AR-15. But it took me like a year to get a pistol. It's like, I just think that's ridiculous. And the sad thing about it is... And, and I understand why they do the, um, what is it called? I understand why they do the background checks for pistols and everything. But I just always found that so odd that here's this dangerous super weapon that you, everybody is afraid of. And it was easier for me to get that than it was for me to get a pistol, which could have easily been like, you know, illegally purchased by all of these knuckleheads running out here, these pookies and railways running around out here with illegal handguns. But I just, I always just found that so ridiculous. And not to mention, if I really wanted, I could have bought a shotgun. And I could have bought a shotgun 35 minutes, 45 minutes, same amount of time as the AR. I could have bought a shotgun. But um, I just, I'm not a fan so much of shotguns. I mean, shotguns are cheap to shoot, but unless you're shooting clay pigeons or unless you're really going hunting, it's like, it's just not that exciting to me. Um, the shotgun I want is a USAS-12 with a semi-automatic or fully automatic uh, drum magazine, but I already know that's not going to happen. Um, the other, the only other one I would have wanted was a AR-12 because the you know the AR platform I like, 
But of course, you know, you're going to have problems with that. Here in New York State, you can't get an AR-12. You're allowed to get a pump shotgun, but they, they, they basically want to make it so that you're at complete and total risk of a criminal taking you out. They, that's basically what it comes down to. They want to put you at such a disadvantage that short of you having an absolutely illegal weapon, the criminals got a way better chance to take you out than you do them. Like if somebody breaks into your house, you're fucked. It's going to take you so long to get this pistol, this AR, whatever it is. It's going to take you so long to get it together that by the time you do have it together, the criminal's literally going to be standing over your bed holding a fucking sickle. And they're just going to be swinging it. And they're going to just spit it and hit you in the head with it. And you'll, you'll still be trying to load up and, and hit the safety. And it's like, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But uh, that's just where we are. So, yes, that's the news today. And um, that's just what it is. So, you know, listen, whether you agree with me or not, just forget I said anything because it really doesn't matter what I said. This is all this is between you and the feds. This is between you and the state. I already told you how I felt about it. I love my AR. I love my AR. I love my Desert Eagle. I love my um, all other stuff, which I'm, I'm almost afraid to even say anything about it now because God knows what they'll make illegal next. But, um, you know, that's what it's just what it is. So it's like, I don't know how you feel about it, but the bottom line is I just read the riot act to you. Um, you know, all I can say is uh, my best bet is that you obey the law. We have to do something very decisive. Number one, you can take the guns away immediately from people that you can judge easily are mentally ill, like this guy. You know, the, the police saw that he was a problem. They didn't take any guns away. Now, that could have been policing. I think they should have taken them away anyway, whether they had the right or not. A lot of times, by the time you go to court, it takes so long to go to court to get the due process procedures. Uh, I like taking the guns early, like in this crazy man's case that just took place in Florida. But take the guns first, go through due process second. To be continued.